all praises to the Most High. I want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh by Shem Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. And I want to do this lesson titled, Why Won't They See and Hear? And I'm going to start with the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 13 through 14. And it reads, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. So this is red letter, and Yahawashai is saying how we got to enter in at the straight gate. Verse 14, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So he's saying only a few are going to find this, this gate, and only a few are going to make it into the kingdom. And now I'm going to go to the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 8, verse 1 through 3. And it reads, And he answered me, saying, The Most High hath made this world for many, but the world to come for few. Verse 2, I will tell thee a similitude, Ezra, as when thou askest the earth. It shall say unto thee, that giveth much mold, whereof earthen vessels are made, but little dust that gold cometh of, even so is the course of this present world. So he's saying how he made this big, gigantic world, it's the world of Yasharala, but he made this whole earth as well, but he, he gave, he chose Yasharala from the foundation of the world. And he also was saying that only a few of them are going to listen to him. And verse 3, he says it. There be many created, but few shall be saved. So it's saying the same thing that Yahawashai was saying in the book of Matthew. That we have to enter in through the straight gate. He was saying how there's only, only a few are going to find that. And I'm going to go to the book of James chapter 1. The book of James. I'm going to go to chapter 1. And I'm going to read uh, verse 12 through 16 in James. James chapter 1, starting at verse 12, and it reads, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Remember, Yahawashai said in John 14, 15, If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So he, let me read verse 12 again. It says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Uh, verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of Yahweh, for Yahweh cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. So the Most High is not the one that's tempting anyone. He's, he's saying that right here. He's not the one that's making people do the sin. Verse 14. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Remember in 1 John how he said the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's not of the Father, but that's of the world. So when people fall into those, the, the, the sin, it's because of their own lust. It's what the Lord is saying here. And, it's actually, and then verse 15. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So it's not actually a sin when you first get the thought. You're supposed to take that thought captive like Yahawashai did, you know, and, and crush it under your feet with the scriptures. You, you, you have a thought, you go to a scripture to help you fight it because the battle isn't ours. It's the Lord's. And that's how Yahawashai defeated all the thoughts. He, you take every thought captive under the obedience to Hamashiach, Yahweh, and Yahawashai. That's what we're supposed to do. And when I'm bringing out these precepts, I'm not just speaking to everyone. I'm speaking to myself as well. You know, I, I have to be a doer of what it's saying as well. And then verse uh, uh, 15 again. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So verse 16. Do not err, my beloved brethren. So he said, do not get caught up in this. Don't fall into those temptations or any of this. Do not err, my beloved brethren. And from there, I'm going to go to the book of, back to the Apocrypha in the book of Sirach and get another witness about how it's not the Most High making people do it. And it reads, this is Sirach 
uh, chapter 15, and I'm going to read verse 20, and it reads, He hath commanded no man to do wickedly, neither hath he given any man license to sin. See, he never gave any man a license to sin. He commanded no man to do wickedly, neither has he given any man a license to sin. So, it's when people fall into the lust, it's the lust of their own flesh and the lust of their own eyes, and it's the pride of life that gets them, gets them to do that. And from there, I'm going to go back to the book of Matthew. I'm going to go to chapter 13. Um, and I'm going to read it, verse 3 through 6. Matthew 13, and I'm going to read verse 3 through 6, and it reads, and he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Verse 4. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them. Remember, Peter was saying, we don't, you don't want to be uh, uh, like the dog returning to his old vomit, or a pig, you know, returning to his, the mud and the mire, because the devil was out there like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So we want to make sure that we're staying obedient to what he's saying. Uh, verse 5, again, uh, some fell upon stony, or verse 5, Salakia, some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth, because they hadn't took, once they received the word, it didn't take root in them. So that's why they fell. And then verse 6, it reads, and when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. So they went, they withered and went back into the mud, into the mire, which is what he's telling us not to do. You have to let the word, you have to receive the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. That's what we have to do. And from there, I'm going to go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 3. Ephesians, chapter 3. And I'm going to read uh, verse 16 to 21 in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3, and I'm going to read verse 16 to 21, and it reads, That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by the Spirit and the inner man. So that's what we're supposed to work on, the inner, this inner spirit that's inside us. And the aquas, the inner woman. And verse 17, that Hamashiach, Yahawashai, might dwell, may dwell in your heart by faith, in your mind, because that's what the heart is, that you be rooted and grounded in love. So you, that's what Yahawashai was talking about when he said some fell on the stony, because they weren't taking, the word didn't take root. So we have to be rooted and grounded in him. And then uh, verse 18, it reads, and may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. So you want to get to know all about Hamashiach, Yahawashai, the breadth, the depth, the height, the length. This is what Paul was saying here. Verse 19, and to know the love of Hamashiach, Yahawashai. And we know that love, he said, for this is love, that we walk after the commandments and then... He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So we know that's what love is. And uh, verse 19, And to know the love of Hamashiach Yahawashai, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of Yahweh, And you might be filled with all the fullness of the Most High Yahweh. Verse 20, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. That's the power of Hamashiach Yahawashai that works in us. If you receive the engrafted word, put it in your spirit, let it take root, then you will start to grow. That's when you start to grow because, let me read that again. Verse 20, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask or think. So it's about him that will do it according to the power that worketh in us. So his spirit has to, you got to let him work it out inside you. You can we must decrease as he increase. And then uh, verse 21, unto him be glory in the church 
by Hamashiach Yahawashai through throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. That's that kingdom of Yahawashai that's coming. That's going to be a world without end. And then from there, I'm going to go back to the book of Matthew, chapter 13, and I'm going to read verse 7 through 9. Matthew 13, verse uh, 7 through 9. And it reads, And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. And verse 8, But others fell un into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, and some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. So remember he says, I had in John 15, I have appointed you that you should go out and bear fruit and that your fruit remain, not be uh, lukewarm and straddling the fence, being back and forth and, oh, you're doing it one day, then you're not. That's not what he's saying. He said to bear fruit and that your fruit remain. And uh, uh, let me see. Verse 9, and it says, Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. So we, he, everybody has ears on their head. But he says, if you got any wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, you need to listen. Listen. Be quick to listen. And then from there, I'm going to stay in uh, Matthew 13. I'm going to just jump down to verse uh, 10 and 11, and it reads, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Verse 11, He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of, the, of heaven, but to them it is not given. And you know why he was saying un, it was given unto you? He was talking to the disciples at that time, but he says, but it's not given unto them. Let's see, let's get to them. From there, I'm going to go to the book of John, so we can see what Yahweh was talking about when he says the, the them. So I'm going to go to John 17. And let's go to verse 9, John 17 and verse 9, and he said, this is Yahweh I all read letter, he says, I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. So he's talking about the ones that was chosen, the ones that Yahweh had given him. He says, for those, Father, are thine, they're yours, and the ones you gave me are mine. That's what he was saying there. And then I'm just going to jump up, John 17, verse 8, and he reads, Yahweh said, For I have given unto them, he, he said them twice in verse 9, now in verse 8 he says, For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them. He said them again. They have received them. The words he's talking about in that part. They have received my words, is what he's talking about with them there, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. So not everybody believes in him. That's why we get a lot of scoffers and gangsayers. So when he's saying, I pray for them, I pray not for the world, he's talking for, about the ones that Yahweh gave him. That's what he's talking about right there. And from there, I'm going to go back to the book of James, James chapter 1, and I'm going to read verse uh, 21. James chapter 1, verse 21. And it reads, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness, with humility, the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. So this is what people have to do. They have to receive the word. They can't keep, I don't want to hear it. They can't reject the word. They have to be able to receive the engrafted word, which is able to save their souls. And from there, I'm going to go back to Matthew, chapter 13, verse 12 through 17. Matthew 13. I'm going to go back to Matthew 13, and I'm going to read verse 12 through 17, and it reads... For who, and this is still red letter, it's Yahweh speaking. It says, For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. So that's, this goes with how he said, For those that desire to save their life, they're going to lose it. 
but those that lose their life for my sake, they shall find it. And then verse, it says, let me start over. For whosoever, verse 12, for whosoever hath, to him it shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. See, that's what the Yahweh shine. That's what he was saying. The Lord said that. In verse 13, it, it reads, Therefore speak I to them in parables. There goes the them again. Speak, I speak to them, to them that thou hast given me in parables. Because they seen, Salakia, because they seen, see not, and hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. So he had to do this in parables, but he said that some of them aren't going to, they're not going to hear it, and they're not going to see, and they're not going to understand what he's actually saying. Verse 14, And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing you shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see and shall not perceive. Because so sometimes when people hear something, it will go in one ear and out the other. They're not going to get it. And they can see things with their eyes, but they still won't see. And then verse uh, 15, it reads, For this people's heart is wax gross. So he said their mind is wax gross. He said this people's mind is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing. Like their ears is full of wax. It's just stopped up. Like they can't hear anything. Dull of hearing. And their eyes, they have closed, like they've just closed, shut their eyes, closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. And we know we can't hear with our eyes and we can't see with our ears, but he's saying, you're going to, once you receive, you should be able to receive the word and get wisdom, knowledge, and understanding when you hear it. And when you see the teacher explaining it to you, you should get it. That's what he's saying. That's all he's saying. He's just he's speaking in a parable. Well, we know we can't see with our ears, or we can't hear, but we can't hear with our eyes. But he's speaking to he was speaking in a mystery and a parable. And then it says, verse 16, But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. He said, blessed are your eyes that they see and ears that they hear. That, that you got the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding of what I'm saying. That's what Yahweh tried saying there in verse 16. And then uh, verse 17 says, For verily, for truly, I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. He says not everybody got the wisdom and knowledge and understanding. When the prophet, when he sent the former prophets, which that was, he was in there, that was him. His spirit was in them. And they weren't seeing and understanding back then. That's what Yahweh Shai was saying. And from there I'm going to go to the book of Luke, chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. And I'm going to read verse 31 through 32. Luke chapter 5, verse 31 and 32, and it reads, And Hamashiach Yahawashai answered and said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. He said, because anybody, he said, they that are whole, they don't need the physician, but those that are sick, they need the medicine. This is the medicine, the word. This is what it is. And then verse 32, he says, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. That's how you know he was talking about the word. Because he didn't come for people that knew that were doing the things right. It was for the ones that weren't doing the things right. And from there, I'm going to go back to the book of James, chapter 1. The book of James. And I'm going to go to chapter 1 of James. Uh, verse 22 to 25 and it reads but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves so he says you, you can't just be hearing it you have to be a doer of it 
because then you're just deceiving your own selves, he says. Verse 23, For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. You're forgetting who you are, that you're a child of the Most High. Or, you know, um, the, the men or the women, the aquas. Uh, verse uh, 24, For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgot, forget it, Salakia, what manner of man he was. You can't forget. Verse 25, But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continue therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. So that's how you're going to be blessed if you're doing the things that he said, and that's pleasing in his sight, doing the things in the scriptures. And remember in Revelations, in the last book, he said, blessed are they that do the commandments so that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. So you have to, you have to be receiving it. You have to have faith. You have to have humility, all the fruits of the Spirit. You can't be going contrary and re fighting these scriptures. You have to receive them. And from there, I'm going to go back to the book of Matthew, chapter 11. The book of Matthew, chapter 11. And I'm going to read uh, Matthew 11 and verse 25, and it reads, At that time, Hamashiach Yahawashah answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them unto babes. Unto babes, because we're babies to him. And let's, from there, I'm going to go explain about the babies in John chapter 3. Go to the book of John chapter 3. John chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. John chapter 3, verse 1 through 6, and it reads, And there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. So this was Yahawashai speaking in Nicodemus. Verse 2, The same came to Hamashiach Yahawashai by night, and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from Yahweh, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except Yahweh be with him. So uh, Nicodemus you know, he was a teacher in, in Israel, and he was confounded on things that Yahawashai was saying. Because it's not about us. It's always about Hamashiach, Yahawashai. Then verse 3, Yahawashai answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So we have to be, become like newborn babies. Like he was saying in Matthew, we got to be like babies. That's being born again. We have to get rid of all the stuff we were taught, throw all that in the trash, and be taught the right way through the scriptures. Verse 4, Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? So Nicodemus asked Yahawashai about it. Verse 5, Yahawashai answered, Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a, mo a man, Salakia, be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. So you have to be born of the washing of the water of the Word. That's being born of water and, that's, and your spirit. You have to get new minds and new hearts. You have to take away that stony heart, like Ezekiel said, and get a heart of flesh. Verse 6, that... That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So he broke it down. You know, like in uh, Corinthians, how he was saying the first man, Adam, was, was earthy. The second man, Adam, was a quickened spirit. He was changed. That was the, the heavenly. That was Yahawashai. So we have to be born of that spirit. Let the spiritual man be born again. Your inner man or woman, they have to be born again. And from there... I'm going to go back to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 11, back to Matthew 11, verse 25 to 30, and, and it's my big study Bible, Matthew 11, verse 25 through 30, and it reads, 
At that time, Yahweh answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and has revealed them unto babes. That's what it was Yahweh was doing with Nicodemus. Verse 26, Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. Verse 27, All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. So the Lord has, the Lord has to reveal these mysteries. Yahweh has to reveal them to you, but he was doing everything Yahweh told him. So he, that's why he was saying, I thank thee, O Father. He gave all reverence and honor to Yahweh. Yahweh stayed obedient. He didn't go contrary. He went with everything Yahweh, his Father, told him. That's what we got to do. We got to be about our father's business, Salakia, which is in heaven. We have to be about his business. And let me read verse 27 again. And it, and it reads, All things are delivered unto me of my father, and no man knoweth the son but the father. Neither knoweth any man the father, save the son. Like, Yahweh was the one that was with him from the beginning. So he knew the father. That's why in John 17, he was saying, I, he was saying, give me that same glory I had with thee before the world was made. That's why he said that in John 17. And then it, it says, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. So the Son has to reveal these mysteries to you. Verse 28, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek, he says, I am humble and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. If you come to him, not reject him, but remember, Yahweh came into his own, and his own rejected him, so that's why they couldn't receive life. He's, when he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one goes to the Father except through me. That's why Yahweh said that in John 14. And then... Uh, Verse, let me read 29 again. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Verse 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In other words, he can take all the burdens. He did take all the burdens. When he put it on, he got on that cross and put his body up as a sacrificial lamb. So he took on the weight of all of Yasharala. So he's saying to us, I could carry the, the weight. I could carry the burdens. And from there, I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, and I'm going to go to chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 through 5, and it reads, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 through 5, and it reads, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Hamashiach Yahawashai and stewards of the mysteries of Yahweh. Verse 2, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. So we have to be found faithful. But with me, it is, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. Verse 4, For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. So that's who we, we have to stand before. We're going to all have to be held, stand, you know, in the judgment seat in front of Yahweh. Every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. Verse 5, Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of Yahweh. So it's not about us at all. It's about him. We have to stay obedient. And from there, I'm going to go to uh, First Corinth or Second Corinthians chapter four. I'm going to jump over to Second Corinthians four, and I'm going to read verse one through four in there. And it reads: Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, so we don't give up, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of Yahweh deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, 
commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of Yahweh, because we're under the cloud of witnesses. Verse 3, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Verse 4, And whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them, which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Hamashiach Yahawashai, who is the image of Yahweh, should shine unto them. He, did not, he wasn't the Most High Yahweh. He was in the image. He was just the image. He wasn't him. And from there, I'm going to go to 2 Peter. And I'm going to close after this one. I'm going to close after this one. And I passed. I passed it. Let's see. 2 Peter. I'm keep passing Peter. Let me get 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 through 19. And so lucky, this is my big study Bible. I keep passing Peter. Here we go. 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 through 19. And it reads, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Hamashiach, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. So this was Peter, how he was saying how they broke bread with him. They touched him. Verse 17, For he received from Yahweh the Father honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Verse 18, And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount, in Mount Sinai and Horeb too. That was him speaking in the time of Moses. So they heard his voice. Verse 19, We have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place unto the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, in your mind. So we got to get this thing right. We have to do it according to the scriptures. And with that, I'm going to give all honor and glory to Yahweh, Shem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, Shalom.